In the Chiefs' Week 12 matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tyreek Hill finished with 203 receiving yards. Not at the end of the game, at the end of the first quarter. Extrapolate those numbers and you've got a receiver on pace for 812 yards by the end of the game. That isn't what happened. Hill never even got close to even doubling that first quarter stat line. He finished the game with just 269 yards. Nice. Obviously an incredible feat. It was good for 14th best all time, but given that he had gained most of his yards in the initial 15 minutes, the final total was disappointing. It seemed a foregone conclusion that he would break the single game receiving record, but he fell 77 yards short of an unbreakable mark. And I'm here to tell you why that is. Why the single game receiving yards record will never be broken is coming up right now. Who set the record and how? On November 26, 1989, the Rams defeated the Saints in the Superdome 20-17 in overtime. In the comeback victory, Jim, not Chris Everett, of the team from LA threw for 454 yards. 336 of those yards went to Willie Flipper Anderson, who pulled in 15 receptions in every way possible, on go routes, hitches, seams, outs, and in traffic. It was an out-of-body type of game for a player who only caught 29 passes in the other 15 15 games that season. Anderson consistently beat whoever the Saints put on him, corners, safeties, you name it, torching all types of coverage. The Rams won on a Mike Lansford field goal, and Flipper had topped the all-time record of 309 yards by his friend Chiefs receiver Stephon Page. And if you do the math, he beat it by 27 yards. The unbreakable bar had been set 31 years ago why it won't be topped. To put it simply, Flipper Anderson's 336 yard game was made possible by a perfect storm of events. Not the Mark Wahlberg type where everyone dies and you're wondering how they knew what happened on the ship. Yeah, I always did wonder that. But the type where a miraculous confluence of events and perfect circumstances creates a situation where it's possible for a receiver to put up those kinds of numbers. Let's dive into that perfect storm. First, the receiver has to have a career day. Duh. No drops, no miscommunications, and an inability to go down after first contact. That's what Flipper Anderson did. He ran the entire route tree to perfection, and when he wasn't open, he made spectacular plays on the ball against tight coverage. It all worked for Flipper that day. Everything that was thrown to me, I just caught. Anderson said in a statement so literal, my head did the opposite of exploding. So too does the quarterback, sort of. The quarterback has to be firing on all cylinders. The receiver can't have a career day if he's not getting the ball, no matter how well he's running his routes and beating the coverage. But the quarterback can't be too good. He can't throw too many touchdown passes and get his team ahead. We'll touch on that later. A couple picks might even be good to get the passing yards up, but keep the score low. That's what Jim Everett did perfectly. He threw for 454 yards on 51 attempts, but only one TD pass and a pair of interceptions. It has to be a bizarrely effective game, but not efficient. Side note, Everett's most efficient day as a pro was when he sacked himself against the 49ers. The opposing coaches let it happen. Flipper Anderson wasn't even the Rams' top receiver in 1989. That was his teammate, Henry Ellard, who was injured and missed this game. That meant the Saints were going to key in on the Rams' running game using their four Pro Bowl linebackers, Sam Mills, Ricky Jackson, Vaughn Johnson, and Pat Swilling. Their defense was unbalanced, all of their talent was in the front, and the secondary was severely lacking. Even with those great linebackers, their pass defense ranked 22nd in 1989. Flipper wasn't the guy who was supposed to go off that game. Color analyst Joe Theismann didn't even mention his name in the pregame. Instead, he talked about Aaron Cox, who would be filling in for Henry Ellert. Flipper had just 19 receptions that season, but they were mostly big plays. His aggressive routes were especially effective against Saints rookie corner Robert Massey and third-year corner Toy Cook, who looked like tiny fish out there compared to Flipper. That's a really esoteric reference. The Saints didn't have a lockdown guy to put on Mr. Anderson. That's an easier reference. But the Saints could have double or triple covered him on every play, but they didn't because they really didn't need to. 
The Saints game plan was to stop the run and for most of the game, it was working. The Rams had actually only scored three points until there were about three minutes left in regulation. It was a furious comeback led by Everett and Anderson that tied the game up. By the time the Saints did start rolling coverages to Flipper, it was too late. And more importantly, it didn't matter. He was catching the ball in between two defenders at a time. If there was a way to catch the pass with his dick, he would have. They have to be trailing most of the game. Play calling in the NFL is all about situations. When you're up, you run to kill clock. When you're behind, you throw to score quickly. The Rams were down almost all of regulation and down 14 points, like I said, for a good chunk of the second half. The offense has to hurry up and run a ton of passing plays. The Rams ran 79 plays in the game, which was well above their average that year, 64 offensive plays per game. More plays, more passes, more chances for Flipper to get the ball. That's a simple equation. And now a quick word from our sponsor. I feel like if we've made it this far in 2020, we all deserve an award or something. But one thing that isn't going to change in the future is the need for delicious meals that are delivered to your door safely and securely without you even having to get up. That's why I use HelloFresh, the flexible at-home meal delivery plan that saves you time and eliminates the stress of having to gear up and go to the grocery store. With their easy to use website, you can add lunches, dinners, extra proteins, even garlic bread if you feel like it. And it's also sustainable. Their prepackaged ingredients actually cut down on wasted food. And that means less prep time and a lower grocery bill. So after this video, go ahead, treat yourself, head on over to hellofresh.com and use my code 5points80 and get $80 off across five boxes, including free shipping on your first box. Use the link below and again, use my code 5points80 and get $80 off across five boxes and support this channel, hellofresh.com. The last huge factor, overtime. This is the big difference between Flipper Anderson and everyone else on the single game receiving yards list. Flipper had the benefit of an additional 6 minutes and 38 seconds of game time thanks to the overtime period. And boy, did it make a difference. Here's the part of the performance that will blow your mind. Through 55 minutes in regulation, Anderson had just 171 yards, which means he got almost half of that record in just 11 minutes. It's hard to comprehend how perfectly things broke for Anderson to hit 336. Like we said, it was snow, a tornado, and a hurricane all at once. Now, we'll take a look at the times when the storm was forming, but never sunk the ship in a tasteless reference. Close calls. In 2013, the Lions and Cowboys played an eerily similar game. Many of the major boxes were checked. The Lions got down by 10 points two separate times in the second half, meaning they had to keep throwing. Naturally, Calvin Johnson had a superhuman day. He got an 86-yard chunk on one play in the first quarter when he caught a slant, broke two tackles, and embarrassed the entire Dallas defense. For a post-human like Megatron, that day in 2013 was peak performance. In fact, I'll probably have my life threatened by DK Metcalf for saying this. We'll likely never get an athlete at wide receiver like CJ ever again. Matt Stafford was extremely prolific, but not efficient. Mm. That kind of sums up his career. His numbers match Everett's almost identically. Stafford, 33 for 48, 488 yards, one TD and two INTs. Everett, 29 of 51, 454 yards, one TD, two INTs and one Jim Rome pancake. These are the kinds of bizarre things that need to happen to create a situation where it's possible to break 300 receiving yards. The conditions were close to the Rams Saints, but lacked one crucial that might almost certainly would have allowed Megatron to eclipse 336. The game didn't go to overtime. Womp womp. Tate no longer needed to toss the ball around the yard, but rather run the ball and throw short passes to Travis Kelsey. The huge first quarter also forced Tampa to change their game plan. They quickly learned that they needed to shift coverage to Hill, and they did. Hill nutted immediately, whereas Flipper Anderson snuck up on the Saints and exploded at the end, which didn't leave them time for in-game or halftime adjustments. That was fine for the Chiefs, who had plenty of options. The Rams, of course, didn't have that luxury. As for the Lions, their non-Megatron receiving options included a 32-year-old Nate Burleson, Ryan Broyles, Chris Durham, and Kevin Ogletree. Essentially, it was Calvin Johnson or bust for the Lions until Golden Tate got there for the following season. God 
damn, I feel sorry for Lions fans. One last close call. Julio Jones hit 300 yards on the nose against the Panthers in 2016, but the once good Falcons took their foot off the gas when they reached a two score lead. Uh, I think they could have saved some of those touchdowns and yards for another game that year, but uh, yeah, they didn't kneel on every play like they should have in the Super Bowl, but they were more interested in shortening the game rather than getting Julio the record. And that's what it comes down to. To beat Flipper's record of 336 yards, it would take yet another perfect storm. And I just realized that the game ironically took place in New Orleans. Huh. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a like and of course subscribe for more interesting stuff about sports. I'm Five Points Vids and you made it to my next video.